Hi, I'm Arlen Geyer. It is a dreary, rainy day today. And so what do you do on such a day? Well, I think you turn the heat up and then you do something interesting. So today I'm going to talk about depth of field. There are four different um, functions that affect depth of field. One is the aperture in your uh, camera. Another is your focus distance or the distance from your camera to what you're focused on. Another is your um, focal length of your lens. And another is the size of your presentation, whether you are presenting something really large or really small. I will touch on a few of those today, but really the one I want to talk about is the aperture. So that will be the primary focus of this video. So if we take a look at uh, this, I have a cork board with pins in it and so uh, these are shot at different apertures. So let's start with an aperture of f5.6. And you can see here that the, we're focused on the middle pin and the foreground pin and the background pin are very out of focus. So f5.6 is a fairly open aperture. In fact, it's as open as I could go with the other settings I had on my camera at the time. And so uh, at a very open aperture, you get very shallow depth of field. And you can see that, I'm gonna zoom in here, and you can see that we're really well focused on this middle pin, but uh, there's very little in focus in front of and behind that pin, which means we have very shallow depth of field. And clearly the foreground and background pins are very out of focus. So let's move from there to the next one. And this is shot at F8. Uh, which is two stops smaller than f5.6. And you can see that the foreground and background pins are in slightly better focus. Let's do a comparison here. So let's see how I go about doing that. If I add that to the situation and select that one. And here we go, we have F8 over here and F5.6 over here. And you can see that these two pins are a little less a little less in focus there than they are over here. A little more in focus at F8. And uh, then if we, let's go back to here and we'll take a look at the next one, which is at F16, which is another two stops smaller than F8. So at F16, you can see that the, uh, two for, the foreground and background pins are in even better focus. So we compare that with F8, and there you go. There's F8, and there's F16, and you can see definitely better focus. So let's just do one more here. And also you can see, if we, if we zoom way in here, you can see that it's starting to go out of focus here, and you can see this has definitely got more before it starts to go out of focus. And definitely you can see a difference there. And if we go down here far enough, we might, we might run into another pin, and you can see the difference there. So, now let's go back out to here. Whoops. Let's go back to here. And we're going to go to F32, which is another two stops smaller than F16. So at F32, you can see that they're even more in focus. And of course, we're going to compare that. If I click there and click there, they're even more in focus than they were over here. So at F32, which is the smallest aperture on this particular lens, I have much better focus than at F16 or F8 or F5.6. Actually, I think I lied a little while ago. F5.6 to F8 is actually a one-stop change. Um, so, um, so if we zoom in here, though, you can see that this is actually um, not quite in focus compared to this. Let's go to the single view here. We'll go back to 
this one and just go to the just that one and zoom in on it make things a little clearer so if we look on at this one it's in pretty good focus but if we go back to this one you can see it's not in such good focus uh, certainly better than it was at the other one and likewise the foreground one is not in such great focus so um, but if you're not printing terribly large, then these would look in focus. If you're printing really large, like when I'm zoomed in here, then they're not going to look in focus. And that uh, is about the uh, size of your presentation. Now, the, these were shot very close up. They were shot with a, a focus distance. The distance from the camera to what was in focus, that middle pin, was about 20 inches, which is pretty short. And if I were shooting from further away, I would have more depth of field. Uh, so. Um, so what causes, oh, uh, while, while we're here, let's take a look at this one. And this was shot focused really close in the foreground. So all three pins are out of focus. And you can see that the foreground pin is the most in focus. It's not very much in focus, but you can see it a little more clearly than you can the other ones. And so this one's less in focus, and this one is the least focused. You can also see that they get larger as they get more out of focus. And I'll explain why that happens in just a minute. Uh, this one over here was done the other way around. So uh, this uh, it was focused on the very, uh, far, a very far distance. And so the furthest one is the most in focus. And of course, it's not very much. And you can see as they get closer to the camera, they get larger because as they get more out of focus, they get larger. And again, I'll explain that very soon. So why do things get out of focus? on a camera. Well, let's take a look. Uh, my father, uh, when I was uh, just learning photography, sat, down, sat me down at the kitchen table and drew on a napkin a diagram of how optics work in this regard. And I'm going to see if I can share that with you. But uh, it being the digital age, I'm not going to put it on a napkin. I'm going to put it in Photoshop. So here's Photoshop. And here is an illustration of what light looks like uh, when it's being reflected off of a single uh, point source. This is like it's just a pin uh, of light and the light is reflecting in all sorts of different directions and some of that light gets gathered up by the lens and is bent by the lens and comes to a point where it's in focus and then spreads out again. Now remember that this is a, oval, a circular lens and so that light coming in is actually forming a cone from here down into uh, to the point and then as it goes further, it, gets, it starts to separate again. So this is a cone of light that is coming in uh, to this point of focus. I want to thank Ken Rockwell of KenRockwell.com for this illustration. I do not have his permission to use it, but Ken Rockwell's site, KenRockwell.com, is a really excellent website, definitely worth uh, your visit. So please do that in order to acknowledge him for my stealing his uh, lens diagrams. So, um, this comes to a point here. Now, the next thing is, let's see what happens if we add a second object. So, we add another object that's a little closer to the lens than the first one was. So, this blue object right here is, again, reflecting light in all directions. Some of that light is being caught by the lens, and it is being brought into a point. So, that point actually turns out, if it's close, if the object is closer, it actually turns out it comes to a point further away, which is why when you focus closer with your lens, the lens extends out because it needs to um, be further away in order to get the focus in the right, on the film or sensor plane. So, um, so again, the light is being gathered by the lens and come, coming to a point somewhere. So what happens when we add a camera to this lens? Let's see here. We have a camera right here. And so there, I have put a camera in here and the film or sensor plane is stopping the light at that point. So the light is not going any further than that. You can see that the, uh, the, it is focused on that red point. It's focused right where that red light came to a point and the blue light is not coming to a point there. So what should be a point of light um, as the, you know, because the source was a point of light, what should be a point of light turns out to be, remember this is a, a three-dimensional object, it's a cone coming down 
to trying to get to a point and it's not making it, so it's ending up making a circle like that. So uh, we have what should be a point of light turns out to be a circle of light. And actually we can see that on our diagram. If we go back to Lightroom and let's look at this one. Okay, so this pin um, is a little big to de demonstrate this, but if we look at just this little reflection of the light source in this photograph, and we come in here to the uh, close-up, you can see what was a fairly small point of light is now a large circle of light. That is that cone of light uh, not making it to a perfect uh, point. And that is actually called a circle of confusion. Quite confusing, isn't it? And so the same thing is true back here. Uh, it's actually quite large here. And uh, that is the circle of confusion for that one. And the same thing is true. And of course, we're here at F32, where it's much more in focus. And at the, the one that's in focus, you can see it's, it's pretty, it's, it's of course, um, pretty well defined. But if we cruise down here to here, and of course, this is in much better focus than at F5.6. So it is um, a much smaller circle and um, doesn't, you really don't see the circle as clearly. So, but of course, in these, um, you can see that this is the one that is uh, focused uh, in the distance. And it's, actually, you can see it so poorly. Let's look at this one. This one's focused up close. And you can see that they get larger as they go out because those, that circle is getting larger. So if you imagine, uh, let's go back to here. And so here we have a point of light. And that point of light turns, out, turns into, when it's out of focus, turns into a circle. Well, what if there were another point right next to that one? So we have one point here, another point right here, we have two circles that are going to overlap each other. And then we have another point right there, that's another circle that's going to overlap there. So we have all these circles overlapping each other. So each point of light uh, or each pixel in uh, each um, photodiode in the camera, each, um, each pixel is going to be another point of light. And uh, so in this case, because it's not coming to a point, another circle of light overlapping each other. And that's why uh, the further you are out of focus, the bigger the object appears to be. And again, looking at this one, it is a quite large circle uh, because of all those overlapping points of light. So if we go back to the diagram here, so that is at a large opening. So now what happens, I'm going to turn off the uh, blue dot for the moment. And what happens when we stop the lens down? Right now we have a fairly open lens. This is the aperture right here. Again, remember three dimensions. So that's an aperture opening about like this. And now we're going to close down that aperture to a very small opening, which we're going to do like so. And you can see in my Ken Rockwell uh, diagram here, the lens is stopped down to a small opening. That might be F22 or F32 or something. And here we have the diagram where that, uh, that aperture is blocking most of the light. The only light coming in is from the center of the lens. So the angles that, is, that are coming into that point of light or that point of the cone are much shallower than they were when we had a large, a, a large opening in the lens. So now it's a very narrow opening. So you can see that the light coming in from that blue object, um, the angle is much smaller, so the circle is much smaller. If we compare that, well, I can't compare it. Um, but it, you can see that it is much smaller than it was before. Here we go. I can just do this. And you can see how big it is there, how small it is there. There we go. And that is because the, lens is, the, the light is coming through a narrower part of the lens. So that is why uh, a lens makes things out of focus. And that's what the character of out of focusness is. And um, that is why uh, you have shallow and deep depth of field depending on your aperture. And always remember that the aperture, the numbers appear to be backwards from uh, the opening. So a small number like f5.6 is a large opening. A large number like f32 is a small opening. 
The reason for that is because it's the number is actually the denominator of a fraction. You don't need to know that as long as you can keep it straight, that it's backwards from what you might think it is. Well, thank you. I hope that has been informative, and um, I will go back to enjoying this dreary day.